All right, we're back. <laughs> this is John. Hey, it's Paul. It's Eric. Man, it's what if geeks? Oh wow! So the thing was like delayed. I'm sitting there. I clicked record, and then it just sat there, like staring at me. Right. Like, no, you go. No, you go. <laughs> <laughs> After you. <laughs> so yeah. So now it's up and running. Uh, whoops. But um, yeah. So we missed like half of what we were talking about. So we're gonna have to like go back over all of that. It's not gonna be as funny. But uh, I guess that could be all part of the intro. So go ahead, Eric. Tell us the story again. Because we weren't recording. I should have just hit record right before these guys got here. I'll learn my lesson next time. All right. So uh, this morning, around 10, 30 or 11, I'm running around the neighborhood, get in front of John's house, I'm right in front of his driveway. There's this about three foot long black snake. And I didn't quite see it at first, but as I, as I got like right up on it, it sort of like reared up at me. I'm like, oh, shit. That's not good. And then John's son walks out the door, like literally like 60 seconds later, and the snake retreats back towards the house into the into the bushes or whatever. And I was telling his son, you know, you don't be careful. You don't want to come out here. He's like, what? Why? Because he didn't see the snake. I'm like, there's a snake in there, a big black snake somewhere. <laughs> so it might eat your cat. You should put your cat inside. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I, what I was saying to uh, him before we start to uh, to Paul before we start recording is it's probably harmless, right? There's yeah. a, there's a black snake around here. He said it's a racer. I'm black sure racer, that's yeah. yeah. And that's probably what it was, right? It was just a big black racer. But uh, <laughs> my, my response was, I'm not a herpetologist. Now, I don't know <laughs> if that's the right word, but I think a herpetologist, <laughs> people, people that study I think that's right. I just wanted to know what you caught because I wasn't sure exactly what that was. And I said a herpetologist is someone who studies STDs. (laughs) Maybe both are true. (laughs) Might be. Well, snakes and... They're both the study of snakes, right? Right. Uh, I was about to go there. Nice. Uh, (laughs) So, yeah. Oh, wow. All right. So today, uh, we've got a couple things we'll talk about today. But the big one, uh, I guess two weeks ago... We were talking, and I asked these guys, just you know, in random, looking for topics. Uh, we have uh, one topic that we're going to get into a few times over the course of this show, uh, like like kind of why the hell was this made kind of thing, uh, where the three of us just have fun tearing something apart. So in that vein, I said, uh, have you guys ever seen The Room? And the two of them just kind of looked at me like, we don't know what the hell that is. So uh, for anyone who has not seen The Room... I gave these guys homework, <laughs> and I made them go watch uh, The Room, and then The Disaster Artist, which was a movie made about, it was like a, not a documentary, but it was a movie made about the making of The Room. And uh, The Room is this horrible-ish movie. Uh, it's like, it's touted as the worst movie ever made. and I think they're right. Yeah, and but it's gone to like cult status now where everybody watches it and everybody has a good time with it. And I knew that these two guys would really appreciate The Room on the same level that I did. So I said, you have to go watch it and then watch The, the Disaster Artist, then we have to go just pick apart this movie. So then the the only uh, description I gave them is like, uh, it's, the movie is written by, directed by, produced by, and starring Tommy Wiseau. And the best way I could describe to them was this movie and Tommy Wiseau is... Uh, if Tommy Wiseau is like an alien that just landed on the planet and he has no idea about human culture and you describe him uh, what a movie is and then he goes out and makes a movie, that's Tommy Wiseau in the room. That's exactly what it is. Yep. And was I far off? Uh, you, spot on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So in that vein, uh, well, first we'll, uh, we'll go into, I guess, a quick Florida man because uh, – or do you want to do what are you into? Because right now I'm into the room and the disaster artist, but <laughs> <laughs> but uh, there's a couple things on there like uh, for Florida. Well, one thing for Florida man I saw that was just funny. I, I I've got two because I, there's a couple headlines that I saw that I figured one of you guys would take. So I have I have one in case. Well, you want to save one ones. for the second show too? Maybe if no one mentions it. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. All right. So you got one, Eric? Nope. He's looking it up. All right. So mine was wasn't really like a Florida man story. But it uh, – let me pop this. That's what she said. <laughs> Florida man. It says, Spider-Man seen pressure washing roof in Florida. So in uh, Miramar, Florida, these two guys have this – I'll try to post a link to it on our Facebook too. But these two guys had uh, recorded a video and posted it to their Instagram of this dude dressed as Spider-Man pressure washing a house like right as a thunderstorm was coming in. And there he is up in the house. And there's this whole like clip of them – trying to figure out if he's even uh, even tethered to anything on the roof. And then 
one of the other guys is like in the video, so I'm going to spoil that part. But he's like, well, I guess if you're Spider Man, you kind of like right, you right. can't be. You yeah. know, <laughs> he's like, you got to kind of go all in on There's it. There's no need. So it's, it's kind of hilarious. But uh, I watched the video real quick right before you guys got here, and it's like freaking great. So it turns out like the dude is like he owns a pressure washing company, and that's just like that's his good gimmick. advertising. Yeah. Was he tethered though? They never said. So probably not. He just spidey it. All right, good. Florida man accused of stealing more than 70 floating pool toys for sex. Well, okay. I mean, no. All right. And so instead, so there's a picture, and this guy looks kind of like a guy that would. He does know that the woman on the box does not come in the box, right? <laughs> this guy looks like he would steal your pool floaties and, and, and have his way with them. Um, <laughs> it says, Palm Bay Pol- uh, Police Department has arrested a man. They say stole pool float toys for sex, quote, instead of raping women. So I'm glad he doesn't do that. Well, you know what? <laughs> Christopher Monin, 35, is charged with burglary of an occupied dwelling, criminal mischief, and petty theft. I can't uh, be mad at this guy, though. <laughs> he said he does it instead of raping women. Right. I'm like, I've got a few that my kids aren't using anymore. I'll send this way. According to police report, Monin was seen acting suspiciously on Thursday. An officer confronted him as he was riding his bike. He said he admitted to having deflated pool toys in the bag he was carrying. Uh, in the past seven months, Palm Bay has been plagued with burglaries in which the suspect cuts the screen or otherwise enters a victim's back pool deck and steals only pool floats. Officer said he was going into victim's backyard and stealing pool toys. About 75 floats were found. So this guy is horny for pool floats. Wow. Yeah, wow. Right? Yeah. Are they like, do they say it's like a specific type, like the animal shaped ones? Or, like, you know what I mean? Like, dolphin? Yeah. 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 <laughs> He's only going for the unicorn ones. Uh oh. No, it doesn't say. I have one of those. That's doesn't not say. good. <laughs> It's not Orange County, is it? <laughs> Close. It's Brevard. It's not far. <laughs> Oof. Oh, he's going to be in your backyard next. <laughs> All right. Go ahead, Art. All right. So uh, this one's a little older. Hopefully you guys didn't do this earlier since I just pulled it up. But uh, So man throws Molotov cocktails at his own vehicle inside Orange County impound lot. <laughs> so this guy's car got impounded. If I can't have it, you can. Well, no, here, here's, can. here's the really good part. So the guy that's running the lot, uh, whatever his name is, something Adams, sure. um, the guy had already paid the 300 bucks to get his car out of the lot. The guy was going to fetch his keys, and then he threw the mullet of cocktails in there and set his own car on fire. Right, so so the guy said if he would have just waited twenty freaking minutes, he could have drove his car off the lot. <laughs> but he decided to throw a mullet of cocktails in there, so now he doesn't have a car, and he's going to jail. So and he's out three hundred bucks too. Yeah, hand out three hundred bucks. Just, Probably show a lot him. more than that after he gets. That'll but, yeah. show him. <laughs> yeah, uh, you win. Yeah, right. I, I, I don't know. Congratulations. <laughs> oh man! All right. So on the uh, the what are you into? What do you got? Anything special? So, I know I'm late to the party on this, um, but my wife and I started watching Designated Survivor. Have you seen this? Kiefer no. Sutherland? Yeah. No, so I'm even uh, later to the yeah. party than you are. Okay. Yeah. So, Kiefer Sutherland is... Not even at the fucking party. Uh, so, you know, when the State of the Union happens, there's always one cabinet member that gets sent to the undisclosed location in case something right. terrible happens. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He is that guy. He's the HUD secretary. And so, he's, you know, wearing a hoodie and drinking a beer watching the State of the Union when the TV goes out. And they opened the window, and ca- the Capitol was was bombed. Oh. And so the president, the vice president, every member of Congress, the Joint Chiefs, the Supreme Court, uh, and a whole bunch of other people are killed. And so he's the president. Huh. Um, and he was not prepared. I mean, he's not like I mean, he was the HUD secretary, so he's not. He wasn't super political. He had never been elected to anything in his life. Um, that morning, he actually the president informs him that he was going to fire him, and he had like a day to think about taking this really shitty job as a consequence, um, the ambassador to someplace that sounded made up. <laughs> and uh, and so then they go to the thing, and now he's the president. And so it's um, it's pretty good. And, and the drum is super amped up because, you know, like every bad thing happens. On top of this bombing, there's like international crises and all this stuff. Sure. And, right. So it's a pretty good show. All right. Cool. All right. Now i got to check that one out. Motherfucker. So... <laughs> All right, so we it cut out for a second. We're just going to go back over what we were talking about. Uh, I'll find a spot to edit. So what are we into uh, was we were watching uh, the Men in Black series because Noah hasn't seen them yet, and he wants to watch Men in Black International. 
and we're going to take them tomorrow to see that. So the last two days we've watched the first two Men in Black movies, and he's been really into them, like, really a lot. He likes them a lot, and they hold up really well. You know, uh, we really liked them. So it was cool, you know. Uh, way back when, you know, Will Smith was still Will Smith, but he was – Good, I guess. I don't know. No, he's he's good. <laughs> he's good. He's he's Will Smith in all movies. No, it's funny too. He's just yeah. every movie, he's just Will Smith. Yeah, it's funny too because we were like, "Do you recognize him?" And I was like, "No." <laughs> like that was the genie, and he went. Like, he's kind of like, "I don't see it." Yeah, he's like, uh, "Well, he's not blue, but right. you know, and he's a lot younger then." So, I don't know. It was just uh, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, he likes it a lot. So, uh, we're gonna go see that tomorrow, and. Um, my son Jeff is coming home Saturday, or well Friday after after he gets off of work. He's driving down for the weekend. He's bringing me my Father's Day gift, and we're rehashing a few things here. So <laughs> these guys don't look imp- as impressed the second time around. Heard but, it, heard it, <laughs> heard it. Yeah. Been there. Um, so he's bringing. Uh, you know, I, I'm just I'm just gonna let the cat out of the bag now because it was funny the first time. Um, for you guys it was, that aren't here with us, you just listening. My son is has been going to a bunch of uh, comic book conventions and whatever, and to the point now where like he's ordering costumes and and trying to help build his own costume and whatever, you know. So he bought me for my birthday. He bought me a life size Darth Vader helmet replica that I can wear. So last night we were Facetiming because he was like, "Yeah, you know, trying to plan coming home next weekend," and he turned his phone around. He's like, "Oh, here." He's like. You know, I was going to surprise you, but I want you to see it first, so you know, because I'm going to bring it home you know, just in case something happens. I don't make it home, and he turns the phone around, and he's got um, the certified replica Infinity Gauntlet. Nice, yeah. <laughs> so he picked that up. He's like, it's got a certificate with it too. So it's, I'm like, cool. sweet, all right. So uh, yeah, well, now I definitely got to get my overhead storage so I can start doing shows in here yeah. and start putting my shit up. But he's bringing that home, and then uh, so we're going to go see Men in Black International tomorrow with Noah. And then Saturday, the whole family, after your son's birthday party, we're all going out to uh, watch Toy Story 4. So we've been kind of into the movies now. And now Eric's watching the computer like a hawk. He's like, if that thing shuts off, I'm going to throw something at it. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why. Um, right in the middle of my Men in Black thing the first time, the computer just, like, stopped recording. So my audacity was fighting with something, and it lost. But uh, So, yeah, so that's what we're into as far as that goes. And then... Uh, I guess I can go on this one here. The um, the countdown that was on uh, all over the internet, The uh, Marvel dropped a picture of, of number four in webs, and nobody knew what it was, and everybody was speculating, and the consensus was that everyone thought it was going to be Marvel doing a comic version of the Sam Raimi Spider-Man 4, and they really, really want that, apparently. To the point now, I think Marvel may just have to do it because, <laughs> like, right. you should have seen how many comments were like, oh, my God, they're going to make it. I was like, really? <laughs> I didn't think, I mean, especially after three with the was, Topher Grace Venom. It's like, not so great. Uh, yeah. yeah, it wasn't that great. But people were crying for number four. And uh, these people lost their ever-loving mind. So that was, like, the growing thing. Like, hashtag Spider-Man 4, like, trended on the Internet all over the place. <laughs> so that was the going like okay this is what it's got to be it's got to be that and then yesterday marvel drops uh number three the same way like whoop so it's a countdown and all the nerds <laughs> are like oh <laughs> yeah so they're like, oh. i love the internet now uh first time we said it eric was like well do we know what it is new no. nobody knows what it is but what i would theorize it to be is typically marvel will have a couple of really big crossover events like mega events last year they did a couple of the last couple of years they did a few spider-man ones and with like spider-man into the spider-verse right. and uh far from home and all this stuff all these spider-man-esque things coming out i would think that it's probably a countdown to another major comic book event right that's gonna have something to do with spider-man who knows what but hey, you know i guess it's time to get back into reading comics again not that I have a stop. I just go back pause. and forth between. I, I, I pause. Yeah, yeah. I go back and forth between like trying to keep up with current shit and then going back and reading old school shit. Yeah, for me, it ends up being like Marvel or DC will have a an event like like you mentioned Spider Verse or something or um, 
one of the big DC crossover events will happen, or DC will come out with one of their animated movies, like Hush is com- Batman Hush is coming out. Yeah, and uh, I hadn't read that whole series of comics, and so before the before I see the movie, I will try to go back and read the comic version of it to then make sure the movie's either on point or not. Right. Um, yes. Yeah, that's what I try. Because that's I was going to say. Speaking of the Batman, that whole the new one coming out with the Robert Pattinson. Yep. Uh, they just dropped like six villains were listed as who's going to be in it. Yeah. So it looks like it's going to be like the long Halloween or something yeah. like that. I saw for sure uh, Two-Face and was it Scarecrow? Uh, no, no. Scarecrow Two-Face. was the one that they said they thought it was going to be and then was, they weren't because it was like. It was definitely Two-Face. I forget what the other one was. There was Riddler, Two-Face, um, Penguin. Those weren't the two. Yeah, these are all the ones they're listing. Okay. Um, the Mad Hatter was in there because it was like all these top yeah, that's names. The one. And then yeah. It was like Mad Hatter was in yeah, there. Yeah, like, it was Two Faces okay, yeah. Mad Hatter were the two. Yeah, that well, I there's saw. like six total. I think Catwoman's in there as well. So there's like six of them that they've listed that are like these are the ones that they've confirmed most of them, but then they're thinking, okay, this is who we're rounding it out with. Right. So we'll see. Uh, it just. Sometimes you get too many yeah. at once, but at the same time, if you like, we've d- talked before. If you give me like an Arkham Asylum video game esque story to kind of make that into a movie, right. mm-hmm. yeah, I'd probably be all in. And I'm still not gonna write off uh, old Twilight Boy too quick. <laughs> but I- <laughs> yeah, <well. laughs> all right, Eric will be the naysayer. Yeah, Eric already has. <laughs> How about you? Are you writing them off yet? Or... No, I'm gonna try. I'm gonna. I'm gonna wait. Um, I've I've seen a couple things and read a couple things about him being good in such and such movie. I hadn't seen that movie. So yeah, I'm try I to think go see this it. week I'm gonna um, try to watch. But then, as we talked movies. about, a lot of people had problems with Michael Keaton being the original Batman. People had problems with Heath Ledger being the Joker, and those turned out great. So yeah. yeah. All right, and then Eric, you had like one other thing that. If you want to, yeah, yeah throw it out I have there. a couple actually. So I had, uh, I had watched the. Sorry, <laughs> he managed to do more research while I was <laughs> screwing up on that. Well, you know what I did? I just went into Amazon Prime and Netflix and looked at my history for the, for the week. So oh, yeah, there I you go. Remembered See? what the hell I was doing. So <laughs> anyway, um, so uh, earlier this week I, I watched The Nun on a whim horror movie. Um, mm-hmm. I had no idea what the hell it was. I watched it all the way through. I, I, the, the, the main character, the female main character, was like oddly familiar to me. I'm like, man, I can't place exactly. And then in, in the credits, right after the credits start, um, they play a scene out of Conjuring. That was when it all clicked. Oh, shit, it's part of the Conjuring universe or whatever. And yeah. and it's uh, Vera Farmiga is in that clip, and that's when I realized that's why she looks so familiar. So it's apparently Thaisa Farmiga, I think is her name. I don't know sure. how to pronounce it, but mm. it's her younger sister. She's, she's like 19, 20 years younger, but... Um, anyway, um, but unfortunately, the movie, uh, not really good. No, the, the plot is almost non-existent. It, it relies like almost entirely on jump scares. That's all they do. They don't really do any creepy buildup. It's just nothing you would want. You would want in a horror movie. I mean, right, it's I like, okay. and you know, it's the it's the what is that like the the twelfth in the in the series yeah, in the universe because so there was many. all the Annabelles. There was like four Annabelles, and there's three Conjurings, and yeah. like okay, yeah, whatever. The first <laughs> couple of Conjurings were good. And I like the Conjuring. That, the first Conjuring, even the second Conjuring was yeah, I, decent. Yeah, and and, and the that's fact what that a couple it's, is, is too. Yeah, yeah. The <laughs> fact, <laughs> precisely, my dear. Um, you know the fact that uh, it's based on sort of a real life story and a, and a guy's writings at uh, Ed uh, Ed Lorraine is that Ed Lorraine Ed Warren? Ed L- Lorraine yeah. Warren. Yeah. I think that makes it even cooler and sort of more spooky, even though you know it's played up for this. But sure. Yeah. It's pretty neat and. Uh, yeah, but this movie, no, no, Mm-mm. no, no. I wouldn't. I mean, you might as well watch it if you want to watch them all. But yeah, I wouldn't uh, recommend it. Right. <laughs> what else you been watching? Um, oh, so the other thing that we had started um, was called. It's called Good Omens. I saw a trailer. So for I that. just saw yeah, a trailer for that. The, yeah, it's the, on, the demon and the angel. Yeah, it's on Amazon Prime. It is incredibly funny. Okay, so the cool. premise of this is it's a little bit. Uh, you guys both saw Dogma, I assume. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So 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 is that kind of like playing with the the whole religious dogma and like sure. you know really playing on things and making them kind of silly sometimes but the premise of it is an angel uh, from heaven and a demon from hell are both on earth right and um they're there to watch do whatever until the end comes 
Sure. And so finally they get the they get notice, you know, the end is is nigh or whatever. So the demon is given he's charged with bringing the antichrist up and delivering it to you know these nuns that have turned bad or whatever so that they can give it to a family to raise the antichrist. And right. anyway, they they're supposed to let this happen, but the two of them decide. I mean this all happens early in the first episode, so, right. so hopefully I'm not spoiling anything, but they they early decide, you know what? We we like earth. We like having steak and uh, you know like so we're going to stop this. But you yeah, know, even the trailer kind of plays up on the fact that they're yeah, trying yeah. to prevent something but, bad. But they're like, the demon in particular, I mean, they're just not paying attention to anything. and not. They end up losing the Antichrist. They don't actually know where he is. <laughs> they, they're following this one kid for years growing up, and then they realize it's not him. <laughs> and so then the four horsemen are being called, and the, uh, the hellhound is coming to meet the Antichrist, and they're supposed to be stopping it. They've decided to stop it, you know, but they can't because they don't. They don't know what the hell's going on. Right. So it's really good comedy in this, though. I, there's a lot of funny scenes. Um, it, I, I'll give you one that, that really amused me from, I, I think it's from a second episode, but um, this this group of people uh, from a business or whatever are all playing paintball together, and they're in, like, little teams or different sections of, I don't know, accounting and finance or whatever, right? And the angel and demon happen to be in this place where they're paying, playing paintball because they're trying to find something there, meet with somebody, whatever it was. And so the demon ends up turning all of their paintball guns into real guns. So they're all like shooting each other. And, and the angel is like, you know, like, what the hell? They're all going to kill each other. And he's like, no, 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 no. They're all going to miraculously survive from the bullets. Otherwise, it wouldn't be any fun. So, you know, you see people getting shot and they're on the ground, but it's missed their artery or whatever. You know? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it, there's a lot of little weird, entertaining stuff like that. It's just kind of the mischief of the demon and the angel deals with it and whatever. OK, cool. Yeah, I got to check awesome. it out. Yeah, I remember yeah. seeing those previews thinking I should watch that. Yep. So speaking of Amazon Prime, um, I guess a good shout out to them because that's how we all watched a couple of this stuff first it was youtube with the room yes and then it was amazon prime with uh the disaster artist so i guess if we got nothing else we should probably get right into this right yeah all right so now we've already given the preview of the room um and i will say the first thing uh two days after i basically gave out this homework <laughs> i got a uh, we have our group message and you get a message from eric that says uh, what did you say? This is a shit show of a movie. Yeah, uh, something along, uh, those, some lines. along those lines. And then I was like, yeah, yeah, you're welcome. And then Paul chimes in like a day later. Like I have so many questions. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, yeah, it's just, it's that kind of movie. It's like, you have to appreciate it. Uh, and then Saturday, Paul and I were kind of BSing for a little bit. And, uh, we both agreed. Like, uh, I said, I knew you guys would appreciate it on the same level that I did, but it's one of those movies where like, if I tried to get my wife to sit down and watch it, 30 seconds in, I'd be getting, like, just dirty looks. Yeah. Like, w- what the hell is this, you know? And then you said, yeah, it would be the same. I, I I will say I would have turned this off if this had not been an assignment. Like, I would not have sat <laughs> through that whole movie. So, I, would have, I would have bailed early. Yeah. I, I, um, I watched The Disaster Artist first. Yeah. Okay? Knowing the premise of The Room but never having seen it, it worked fine. When I started watching this for our assignment... It took me till the third try to actually get through the movie. No, seriously, yeah, I like it. Takes. I started yeah. it. I, I I don't want to jump into this, but I do. But it's like you watch ten minutes of movie, and then there is this awful gratuitous sex scene. I was like, Jesus yeah. Christ, this is ridiculous. Yeah. Why am I even watching this? Yeah. And I had to shut it off there. And I went back the next day, and that I was started the first again. reaction I got. Yeah, I was like, uh. but I I same reason I power I kind of powered through it. No pun intended, um, because I wanted to watch it first and then watch. The Disaster Artist to get all the references. We were just talking before we started recording that I think if I had watched The Disaster Artist first, it would not have made any sense to me because no. I wouldn't have known that James Franco did such a good job being Tommy yeah. Wiseau. So like, I, I didn't yeah. know that. Yeah, yeah, that is exactly what I said to Paul. Like, yeah. I kind of felt when I was watching it, like, why is he acting this ridiculous? Like, is yeah. it just like a play on... And this guy is see... like exaggerating it. Yeah. But then once I saw it, I was like, oh, holy shit. It yeah. is perfect. <laughs> right, right, right. He was literally to it's the point so where good. like you barely see his mouth move half the time. Just like <laughs> yeah. the time it was oh in the movie. Right. You're like, did he dub? The... No, that one wasn't dubbed. Because half of the time, there's also a whole bunch of like overdubbing like later on. Yeah, like, it sure seems movie. like it. Yeah, like, like as soon as the camera turns away from them, yeah. they do all this other audio dubbing later that you're like, Really? Because you, you can 
when you're listening real close, you can tell, you know, the sound quality changes just a little bit. But then, when, like, when he's talking, and there's half the time, you know, I'll do anything for my princess, his mouth barely ever moves. And you're like, <laughs> was that Doug? Yeah. No, no, that's actually him. No, it's just, yeah. So, like I said, <laughs> shit show of a movie, but you have to watch. It's, it's like the world's greatest train wreck. Well, so here's the thing, and I was saying this to Eric a minute ago. It's not fun good. It's not lovable good. It's not Plan 9 from Outer Space so bad it's good. It, no. It's not even Sharknado bad it's good. It's <laughs> right. It's a really terrible, terrible movie. <laughs> yeah. And, and only after having seen The Disaster Artist can you sort of make fun in, in a way that is, you know, makes it a little bit more palatable. Or if you watch it in a in a group and and kind of pick it apart with friends, yeah, which is how I wanted to do it initially. Right. I mean, I mean, it's essentially over a couple drinks. It is you know, it is a know, perfect yeah, a drinks. what not to do All when making a movie, yeah. what not to do when writing a script, what yeah. not to do when filming, what yeah. not to do when casting. He took all yeah. those like, notes and that's what he went and made his movie with. <laughs> right. So, for those of you listening, what you have to realize, and again, I'll reiterate it in case I it didn't come out before. Um, stop this podcast and go watch. A, at least the room, but yeah. I sh- watch both because it's worth it to an extent. <laughs> it's, it's definitely it's worth it for the way we're going to pick it apart and play around with it and make fun of it. But it's just it's worth watching the room and then the disaster artist just to see how great the disaster artist is yeah. at one po- poking fun at it and two because you guys have to realize that. This son of a bitch was serious right. when he was making this movie. Like, this is a serious movie. And then at the end, when he realizes that it's horrible, he twists it around because people are laughing at it and right. they love it. And that they even play on they play on that in The Disaster Artist. But uh, it's not until later that he embraces the fact that it's laughed at and as the worst movie of all time. And, and that's why I say it's not, it's not lovably good. It's not any of those... Like, I can imagine your best thing was Sharknado. Yeah, that's that when the they best. made when they sat down to make Sharknado and they cast Ian Ziering and Tara Reid, they're like, <laughs> "Okay, we're making a pretty shitty sci-fi movie, bad CGI sharks that'll be in a swimming pool." That's just what we're making, and everyone's like, "Okay, that's let's that sounds fun. Let's, let's do go. that." And yeah. it also became a cult following. But again, yeah, right. Oh, I love them. It was bad, good. Yeah, because right. It was bad, bad. Right. This is bad, bad. Like <laughs> yeah, he, yeah. he, he was trying to make a movie. So that he and and Greg could become stars, and so he yeah. he bent it seriously. They went there to go become stars, right? Yeah. He got the stuff and did all the whatevers, and you know filmed it and found the money and however funded he did that. his own way. He right. funded it all himself. Well, so he did all that. I, I read that he actually got about six million bucks from like a former uh, teacher of his that did English as a second language, like ran some academy or something. Right. So I, before we jump into the movie, I just wanted to talk about that one point because six million dollars budget for a movie sixteen years ago. Right. Yeah. yeah I was going to literally go right off of the um, the screenshots on yeah. the disaster artist and what they said I go- on there. I googled it after yeah. seeing it. Yeah. It's the same. It's got it's, six million. It's dollars. six million dollars. Estimated budget, is yeah. over. All right. Here, I'll just. Well, that's what then he we'll got go from back one person. It, we'll probably apart. some more money involved, but yeah. But here's. What their end credits are, or what the screenshots were, whatever you call them, the uh, the cards mm-hmm. on the, the film were, in The Disaster Artist, so you guys will all see this later. Uh, the Room released in one theater on June 27th, 2003. One theater. And then Tommy Wiseau paid to keep it there for two weeks, hoping to qualify for an Academy Award. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Wiseau. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, the production oh, hi, budget <laughs> allegedly exceeded six million dollars. Yeah. It grossed eighteen hundred dollars on its opening weekend, yeah. um, and then now it's got a cult status. Of course, with like midnight shows, like your Rocky Horror Picture Show, whatever yeah. they do that. And then the very last card, which amazed me, it says to this day, no one knows where Tommy is from, where he made his money, <laughs> or how old he is. Yeah. <laughs> and you know what? If you, dude, if you look at him in that movie. He looks like he's our age. If you look at him today, yeah. some oh, of the screenshots, yeah. he yeah. still looks like yeah. you know, maybe a little bit older, but not like that much older. You I, know what I mean? He still looks horrendous. Speaking of that, because in the scene of the disaster artist, when when Greg's mom asks him how old he is, he goes, "How old are you?" His age, nineteen, and she goes, "Oh yeah, I just turned 40. He goes, "Happy, happy birthday!" Happy birthday. <laughs> <laughs> I, 
I want to know how much of like all of those interactions were yeah. true because you know they went back and talked yep. to everybody because. I want to read. I want to read the disaster artist now. So do I. I, oh, I, yeah. I. You got to figure there's some stuff that didn't make the movie, or or is yeah. even better explained. Yeah. In the book. So um, yeah. So. so I watched it on YouTube, um, and the 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 one I chose had these weird Italian subtitles, and then like you know YouTube on the bottom right has a bunch of things to look at. Like two over from that was a, a midnight showing of the room somewhere in California, and they set the the camera showing the screen and then there's like just a mic in the crowd so it picks up different voices um and then there's i guess somebody goes back and like put stuff up so every time um a body of water appears people start chanting water um and then every time uh there's some other stuff that happens people chant and then in the in the love scene uh she takes her hair down right and then like in the next cut of that scene, her hair's back up. So you hear somebody go, why the fuck did you put your hair back up? <laughs> um, and then in the love scene, he take, he doesn't have his jacket on when they're laying in the bed. And then in the next, not, you know, like it cut, the camera cuts. Yeah. And they're standing up and he's got his jacket back on. Yeah. And you hear somebody yell, when'd you put your jacket back on? Yeah. Yeah. I caught that one the second time I watched it. Yeah. Well, this last time I watched it, I was like, because I went into it purposely to try to, write shit down to pick it apart with you guys. And that's the first thing I picked up on was like, when the hell did he put his jacket back on? Right. Yeah. So I, I would try to give you guys a plot synopsis, cool. but, um, I think really, I, there, there isn't one outside of the fact that the description I gave of, he's an alien that came down and made a movie. And that's yeah. what this is. Yeah. If I were trying I, to imagine what was a thought he was making, it was maybe like a dark romantic comedy. Sure. sure. Maybe. Yeah. I don't think there was supposed to be any comedy involved in the beginning. Well, yeah, that neighbor kid. It came in. That neighbor kid. It's a movie about human behavior. Yeah. Like, I, I, sure. I almost wonder if it's somewhat like autobiographical. Like maybe they not even say that in the disaster artist. Too. Too. Oh, they say that I think it artist. might be. It might yeah. be. Because yeah, because they're like, oh yo, so maybe there is a Denny out there. Maybe there is. There's a, like, like there's oh, some there weirdly Lisa? specific details he lays out, like especially in the room when he's talking about his history or whatever. And he's like, oh, I came to California. I had a two thousand dollar check, but I couldn't cash it because I was from out of state. It's like weirdly specific details. Like you must have had some experience with that. Though, yeah, that was your experience. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It was wild, and just, yeah, the acting is horrendous. Like, uh. Some of the the dumb shit they did in that movie, like now, mind you, again, this is all because this is how Tommy wanted to do it. Uh, like the the green screen for the for the skyline, mm -hmm. horrendous. Like it looks like something I would have done. Yeah, you know. <laughs> so I, I listened to an interview with uh, Greg, uh, whatever his name, the guy that plays Mark. Yeah, yeah. Nicotero. Yeah, Greg Nicotero. Yeah. I, I listened to an interview with him this morning when I was running. That's what I was doing instead of listening to music. But um, <laughs> no, it was actually a good interview. But he was saying that green screen. So they actually filmed that on a roof, but it was the roof of a parking garage. And then they put the green sc screen around it. And the interview was asking, I'm like, what the hell is the point of that? Like, we understand having a green screen, right? You do that so you can film in any weather. Right. But if you're doing it outside anyway. And but he's just, like, on top of that, you're in the right city that you're supposed to be in. Right. Yeah. You're filming it on a rooftop. Yeah. And that's exactly why not just what use, this guy did. Right. Yeah. <laughs> why not just use the real scene around yeah. you? Yeah. And he did that time and time again. <laughs> yeah. Like, like just throughout this. That's exactly thing. what Greg said. He said, he said, every point where there was a decision like that, we went the way you, you, you wouldn't go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I want to read the disaster. It's because I, I got to imagine there's. It's like hearing that description from him because he he wrote it with somebody else, like some yeah. ghostwriter. But uh, yeah, I want to I want to hear all that. Um, you have like a running sort of tab of of yeah. stuff you took. <laughs> well, so I, I sat with I, my I, laptop in my lap and I watched this movie. And I, I sat just with this notebook in my lap and, typed and just yeah. as I went. So I mean, this is a running sort of. I mean, it's a running dialogue of all the scenes, right? Yeah. This is like a, but it's not it's not done in a way of I I noted what was happening. It's sort of like a shorthand for me so I can remember the scenes. Okay, right? that'll so, be alright. So I have the oh hi Mark, and then what the fuck is wrong with this neighbor kid? Yeah, and then gratuitous sex scene behind a rainy window and sheer curtains, right? Yeah. This is how I wrote it out to myself as a, as I was going along, and then <laughs> I did the same sort of thing. My first note is Denny. How old is he, and why yeah, is he so, so creepy? Okay. So a, a couple of things. The, the oh, hi, Mark, right? We have to talk about that yeah. because this is like 
So th- there is some bizarre thing that Wazo does where every time a character pops into a scene, he has to like announce him yeah. by yeah. saying, oh, hi, yeah. Denny. Oh, hi, Mark. Why, yeah. He has to do that, right? Every time. Yeah. And part of me got to thinking that this looks a little bit like it was meant to be a play. Right. And he's like announcing somebody walking in off stage left so that the audience will pay attention over there. Right, right. But of course, this is a TV screen and you right. see it anyway. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. I mean, maybe that was the intent of, of doing that. I don't really know. Well, again, know. because he's not a very good writer. So he's probably like going on some of that prior knowledge from like, you know, what he learned in film school. Yeah, or whatever, whatever he learned from yeah, art you know, school. His thespian with, school. Yeah. yeah, exactly. He's probably going back to that and just. Yeah. Like you said, everything that they're not supposed to do, those are the notes he took and just like, <laughs> yeah. okay, this is what we're going to do. But like. Okay, but the, then the Denny, the yeah, Denny kid, the Denny thing right. is the weirdest. You know what I think? And the funniest thing is they they touch on it in Disaster Artist too, because even the actor was like, "How old is this kid supposed to be?" He's yeah. like, "Like your age, like a boy." And he goes, "I'm 29." And he goes, "Whatever." Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. B- based on his weirdness, now forget about the actor. Just the weird things that I think he was supposed to be like mentally handicapped. Because the whole Maybe. thing is weird of him paying for his uh, paying for his tuition or whatever, mm-hmm. and keeping him living in the apartment, and then the stuff he says, like he just looks at uh, Johnny's girlfriend, like, "Oh, I want to kiss you," and then they go upstairs to to have sex or whatever, and he jumps on the bed. He's like, yeah. "I want to watch." <laughs> Like that's yeah. what I'd expect. Yeah, like, starts a pillow fight with him, right. or he joins in the pillow fight. With it's him. like it's like that's what, Which, if by he, the way, if he I didn't been, know. Sorry, sorry. No, 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 I, I just I didn't know a pillow fight was foreplay. I've been doing this shit wrong for like. 30 fucking years. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. Okay. But well, so, he doesn't knock, right? Yeah. He doesn't knock when he comes in the first time. So I'm At like, all. oh, that must be their kid. Oh, and that creepy look up the stairs while he's eating an apple. Yes. Yeah. And then, right. He <laughs> nope. says, I nope. want to kiss you or you're so beautiful or something like uh, that. Yeah, that's later on. And yeah. then I'm like, okay, maybe it's not their kid. And then they go upstairs and he jumps in the bed and I'm like, okay, maybe he is their kid because why else would he be in their bedroom? <laughs> but then uh, he says, I want to watch or something. Yeah. I just like watching you guys. Wait, what? <laughs> and then he says, I've got some homework to do. So he just leaves. And I'm like, Bye. what just happened? Yeah. yeah. But and that, so that so happens. I, I do not think he was supposed to be any kind of handicapped at all. That's no. just how yeah. Rizzo just, runs. Just, if, if that's what makes it okay in your head, sure. Well, in but retrospect, nope. if they had cast a guy with Down syndrome or something, I'd be like, oh, this all makes sense. Right. He doesn't, he doesn't yeah. quite have the yeah. boundaries. He's missing Correct. the social. Yeah. Something yeah. Something is – and that, that's why that's why Johnny paid for his education. That's why he's keeping him here. That makes sense. Yeah. Right? But then you have the drug scene on the roof. And it's right, like, okay, which is incredible by the way. And that's oh, why but Denny is just randomly, Denny because – Randomly Tommy. later he comes over for a, uh, some sugar and flour and a stick of butter. <laughs> why didn't you just ask like for just a whole just fucking cake? And just like, like, Claudette, <laughs> Claudette says to him, don't you have a kitchen? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It's amazing. <laughs> yeah, the drug dealer scene is awesome because the drug dealer couldn't wait five. First of all, where's Denny getting the money in five minutes? Five, he'll be here in five yeah, minutes. They're on a roof. Yeah. They're on a roof. Five minutes. And that dude went intense, didn't he? Yeah. <laughs> and the drug dealer couldn't wait five minutes for his money. Yeah. He's like, and how much money are we talking? He was going yeah. to blow the kid's brains out for it, right? But, yeah. But then uh, uh, Mark and, and Johnny come up and they wrestle him and, and then they're let's like – Let's take him to the police. Yeah, they let's take, take him to the police. Jail. Fucking 60 seconds later, right. they're back on the roof. Yeah. Like, wait a minute. what the, Is the police station next door? Right. And you, you didn't have to give any testimony or anything? Right. They just, just take back. – you could just drop people off at jail. Like, here, take this they guy to jail. Okay. put a gun to somebody's head. Here's the evidence. Thanks. Oh, hi, Johnny. I didn't recognize yeah. you. Thanks. <laughs> oh, yeah. The, uh, in the fl- that was in the, the cops doing too. Yeah. The scene in the florist when he walks in and she goes – Oh, hey, Johnny, it's you. I didn't recognize you. Yeah. And then she, for, like, you wouldn't not recognize that. That guy. That weird right, guy. Yeah. And then she goes, you're my favorite customer. And I'm like, oh. but you just said you didn't recognize me. You didn't me. recognize yeah. me. How do you not recognize your favorite customer? Yeah. Which, again, they play on it on the disaster artist. Seth then, Rogen's like, then he who says, wouldn't recognize that guy? <laughs> and then he turns and goes, oh, hi, doggy. Uh, yeah. yeah. Hi, doggy. That's me. Oh, hi, doggy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, everything about this movie is so incredibly bad. Yeah. This is why I love it. It's, it's like Mystery Science Theater and... All the sci-fi movies like Sharknado all rolled into one and then set on fire. And that's, yeah, it's that's prob- about as great as... <clears throat> it's probably worth note, too, that this entire movie takes place, I think, on about five sets. Tops. Yeah. Maybe. Because there is the room where the vast yeah. majority of it happens. Yeah. There's the upstairs of that room. Yeah. Their bedroom. Yeah, their yeah. bedroom. There's the, the rooftop. Roof. 
Then yeah. there's the one shop. scene in the flower shop. Yeah. And then an alley. There's one scene in the alley with the oh, football. Oh, and they're jogging. They're jogging. And there's the one point. scene in the park. There's a coffee shop. Oh, in the coffee shop at the very okay. end. That's so right. seven yeah. scenes. Seven. But but, um, but 90% sets. of it takes place in the room. Yeah. And, 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 and about sure... 9% more is in the bedroom. And then. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I'm pretty sure only one of those sets was paid for. Everything else was just like. <laughs> we, we need to talk about this love scene. The, oh, the, God. the first love scene between, <laughs> between Johnny and Lisa when he humps her belly button. <laughs> I am like, what is what is he doing? Because yeah. it, it's whole... it's very clear when he's th- first of all, you see his whole ass. Yeah, like a he, lot, a lot of it, and, and he's and thrusting and hard, thrusting, <laughs> and he's thrusting. Except he's up too far, like way too far. He's in her belly button. Yeah, yeah, way too <laughs> and, far. And they say this in Disaster Artist because Seth Rogen goes, "Does he know where her vagina is?" <laughs> yeah, that was, I wrote that one down. He does know where her vagina is, doesn't he? But but, yeah, and, but you watch it and you're like, what is he? What's going on here? What is he doing? Yeah, it's, it's ridiculous. It's, you don't. You have no it, idea. Even it's anatomically not possible. Like where he is. No. General commentary about the sex scenes too. They're weirdly filmed. They recycle scenes from the previous ones. I'm sure of it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Positive. I'm sure his his thrusting butt was also in the second sex scene in the yeah. same everything. Yep. Um, she would then, probably only do the, that once. I, are and the, the are three the, different choices of. Uh, Background music, yeah, Woo. right, and and then the breathing, which I, I think it. is dubbed over, and it's the weird. breathing is dubbed over, and it's some weird like, like ah, and the CD ah, skips, ah, the, the background track skips yeah, at one yeah, point. Yeah, it's almost like it's part of the music, or something. it's yeah. really bizarre. And, and the first one, and they is, don't fix it. And the first no, one is like it's got to be four plus minutes long. It, it is long. It's very long. Yeah, like it's the definition of gratuitous. Yeah. It's, like, a, it's, like, it's a long time to hump a belly button, like. Mm-hmm. You know, a very long it's time. Awkward. He was fixing a hernia. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so awkward. And to you'll have to uh, forgive the three of us that 90% of what we're going to say was actually covered in the Disaster Artist as well because it laughs at everything that was in there. So no, I wouldn't say 90%, maybe 50%, but we can make references back to the jokes in the Disaster Artist as we're going because yep. it's ridiculous how on point what everybody who's seen this movie – that's what they said in this in the uh, the disaster artist. Like they're like, oh, you know, we we know, and this is what we're gonna make fun of. Like one of my favorite ones, uh, just to throw a random quote out there. This is the stellar writing of the room. Okay, uh, Johnny and his friend Peter are talking about uh, Johnny's issues with Lisa, mm-hmm. and he says, "Peter, you're a psychologist. Do you have any advice?" And Peter says, well, you know, considering what... And Johnny goes, Peter, you're always playing psychologist with us. Yeah. (laughs) I wrote that down, too. You always play psychologist with us. (laughs) You just fucking asked him for his opinion. (laughs) But that's him throughout this whole movie. He like, oh, the fight scenes. Oh, my God. The fight scenes at the end are ridiculous. It's hilarious. There's a a scene where Lisa's mom, Claudette, they're having a they're having a conversation, and she would always like every time they did, she would walk in. They talked for two minutes, and she go, "I gotta go." She's always had, she always has yeah, to so go. She's got to go somewhere. Not to tangent you, but that happens with a lot of going. characters. Yeah. Because the next thing I had wrote was about the neighbor could coming back over, and he asked to see Johnny and says he wants to hang out with him. She says he's not here, but he'll be home in a couple of minutes if you want to wait. No, I gotta go. Sorry. Yeah. And the kid leaves. Yeah, yeah. Like, Exit stage left. Why were you coming to hang with him? Then? Yeah. <laughs> right. Right. If you had that to go. happens a lot yeah. though. There's yeah. a lot of that. Oh, I gotta go. It's yeah, it's so back and forth Sorry. with the writing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, but she's like, I got the results. I definitely have breast cancer. Yeah. And and Lisa just goes, because oh, yeah. she's an, I wrote down here, she's bipolar or something, because she just Lisa, changes in the middle of every conversation. She's like, Lisa is I don't self-centered. Love, and, I don't love Johnny anymore. Yeah. Just every conversation. <laughs> but is, but I'm throwing him a birthday party. Yeah. But I don't love him. <laughs> and she, she looks at the mom. Her mom just told her she has breast cancer. She goes, don't worry about it. You'll be fine. Yeah. Yeah. What the and fuck was that? No one's, no one cries. And it's never mentioned, mentioned again, again. Yeah. at all. Why did period. they bring that up? Seriously. There is a bunch of weird little... Yeah, the drug dealer that just gets dropped that off hang at the and police they never at a convenient right, right yeah. outside the roof. And the fact that Denny... It's never brought up again that Denny was doing, was drugs, doing drugs or selling drugs yeah. or no. somehow involved in drugs. But my favorite... Not my favorite. Sorry. This entire movie is my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> but one of the things that stood out to me yesterday where I was actually talking to my phone... Um, not into at <laughs> was when uh, Lisa and Claudette are on the roof with Denny and they're like, you know, just giving him like a ration of shit. Right. Yeah. And I think it was at least seven times 
the two of them are going back and forth. Claudette's like, what, you know, what did you, oh, why, you know, why was he after you? What kind of man? That is about, and she's constantly like, what kind of things are you getting mixed up in? And Lisa keeps telling her, leave him alone. It'll be fine. And then, Denny, what kind of money? What kind of money do you own? What kind of money? And I'm by the seventh time, I was like, <laughs> um, uh, pesos, dollars, <laughs> wampum. I don't know. What do you mean, what kind of money? <laughs> what the fuck is she talking about at this point? Yeah. But she keeps going, what kind of money? Uh, blood money. He killed five people. I don't fucking yeah. know anymore. There's a lot of, I don't want to talk about it. Don't worry about it. Don't get upset. Like, yeah. 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 That's just his, Johnny's sort of general yeah, refrain think, from everything. I think since Wazo wrote this and he's not a native English speaker, that he was experimenting. He is. He's from New Orleans. Get the fuck out I think he you was. Cajun. I, I think he was experimenting with like colloquialisms in English or something. And he just and like, it. Yeah, and he's just like the ones he knows. He just put out there. It's not just words either. It's it's stuff that people do, like the fucking yeah. football. Like that's oh not God. how anybody plays football. No, they don't stand two feet away from each other and toss it back yeah. and forth. We, oh my God! The, for for those of you listening. The three of us are at a what a six foot table, yeah. Right, we're on. Yeah. We're it's like on, a six foot by three foot table. Eric tops. and I are next to each other, and John's across the table from us. That's about how far they stand when they're playing <laughs> football, and they just sort of underhand toss it to each other, and the ball's in the air for like a tenth of a second before someone catches it. And, and our seven year olds pass better than these guys. Yeah. Did. And there are, I and think, that's how, and there's five, two, maybe six different scenes yeah. where they play catch, including one where they're all in tuxedos. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. I yeah. was gonna get to that later. Oh yeah, oh, we will. Don't worry. I thought. <laughs> oh, sorry. Cause, no, because I just gotta rewind back yeah, yeah, to go ahead, your when I said he's from New Orleans. You were like, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> yeah. That's actually in the disaster artist. Yeah. He says he's from New Orleans. Oh, does he really? Yeah, yeah. He insists that he's from New Orleans. Yeah, there's so a, there's I a think... scene with a casting director, and she's like, "Am I picking up an accent?" And he goes, "I'm from Louisiana." <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because he's like, "I'm from, I'm from New Orleans." New Orleans, yeah. Like, where? New Orleans. And Where? Goes, New Orleans. Goes, Louisiana. The Big Easy? Yeah. And she's like, oh, New Orleans. Really? <laughs> like twice in that movie yeah. he says he's from New Orleans and everyone's like, okay. <laughs> I guess sure. I, I guess I missed it. I oh, my know. God. Yeah. That, yeah. That's why I said that. Again, I saw <laughs> Disaster Artist first, so yeah. I did not have it. Quite that's just, it was, your reaction was yeah. hilarious. I think, uh, like, Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> I think if I remember right when I was listening to that interview with Greg this morning, he said that he was originally from Poland. And then he moved to France and then to California. Yeah. Maybe. 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 And then when he was in France, he changed his name to Tommy Wiseau. That was not his birth name. That, that, I'm pretty sure that's what he said in the interview. Huh. Okay. <clears throat> Definitely got to do more research. Yeah. But I, but his accent sounds almost Asian or something. It's weird. It's, I, I'm not it even sounds sure. like Eastern, like like yeah. Poland, Czechoslovakia, something like that. You think so? Yeah. So, yeah, the Poland thing maybe makes sense. We all somehow managed to... Uh, ignore the obvious Polish joke on how he makes movies. Yeah. So thank you. Thank you for taking the high road, gentlemen. <laughs> I had to bite my tongue for a minute. <laughs> I almost hurt myself. All right. So, uh, I guess yeah, keep going. No, no, we're, no, we're a third of the way down his page. We'll, is great. We'll stick, we're not even a third. Oh shit. I had two pages. And we're, we're, we're here on the first one. But so what I was going to say next is, uh, well, we covered some of the stuff that's coming up, but, um, the two friends, uh, Mike and, uh, I don't even know their names. It doesn't matter. You yeah. know, those two friends they have, the that ones apparently that, the ones that come in to the house. Yeah, to walk into the house and have sex. So yeah. even, yeah. Apparently, even when they're not home, well, she they, was cute too. Anyway, they yeah. leave the door open. Yeah. yeah. And it's so their friends can come in and fuck on their couch with, yeah. with food, no less. We're going to do a chocolate. Yeah. They did a chocolate, right? Is that what I wrote here? Yeah. Yeah. Yep, yeah. Yes. Chocolate is, uh, what do keep saying? Chocolate. Not an aphrodisiac. They, they say something else. <laughs> yeah. Like, like an, an, a love enhancer or some shit like that. I forget yeah. what they the say. The language that of love. That guy has, yeah. Yeah. has the funniest blowjob face. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> Except he starts the blowjob face and she's not like – She's still, not, she's there not down yeah. there yet. She's, she's at his belly button. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> oh, uh, Apparently, that's where all the good uh, things happen in this movie. Yeah. <laughs> Honey, <laughs> we got to have a talk. <laughs> oh, my God. I also like – I just finally looked at your page and I realized that you've got – repeatedly in bold. Oh, hi, Mark. <laughs> oh, hi, Mark. Yeah, I was trying to count it. I was trying to count. There was actually only, I think there was only five of them. But there was Oh, uh, hi, Denny's, and there, there was a whole the bunch be, more. The best Oh, hi, Mark is when, he, come, when he, he gets on the roof and he's got the water bottle in his hand. Oh, yeah. And he's like, I didn't I did not hit her. I did not. Bullshit. I did not. I did not. Oh, hi, Mark. Oh, hi, Mark. 
Yeah. Right. Like, and then you're on a roof with nothing else around. Like you, you wouldn't have seen that. Dude, yeah. Like I you wouldn't have seen him. Uh, okay. So that so there's this that reminds me of some. There's this weird thing in this movie where he has decided that women are like awful, right? He's done everything right, and the woman is just like evil. There's a couple different things where they where they say stuff like uh, Mark says something like, you know, women are either too smart or too stupid or they're evil. I think that's exactly what he says, yeah, right? Yeah, pretty and much. And kind of set that up, and and, and her character does everything wrong in this while his does everything like he's got something against women yeah. that it's definitely putting it out here right? right but then there was a point at that rooftop scene where he says oh hi mark and then they start talking about women or whatever and mark tells him a story about like this girl that <laughs> yeah. has sex with like 12 <laughs> guys yeah. and gets beat up and then he starts <laughs> laughing <Yeah. laughs> like what the fuck yeah. <laughs> mark that's such a funny story yeah, yeah. i can't do his well oh, that's but... such a crazy story yeah. mark the uh there's a scene about that in the disaster artist where they're, they're talking to each other, like Seth Rogen and the others are like, does he understand that he shouldn't? So Seth Rogen goes to him and goes, Johnny, listen, uh, or Tommy, listen, the story that he's telling you is terrible. Like, and, and your reaction should not be to laugh. The way Seth Rogen plays it, though, he goes, the story that he's telling you that you wrote. Right, right, <laughs> right. That you wrote for this movie is a really horrible one. And so your reaction of laughing isn't normal. Yeah. And he goes, let's do it again. He goes, just, he goes, we've got takes of you laughing. Just try it without it. And they go, okay, go again. And he laughs again. Yeah. And they're like, oh. this is like three times. And then it's like, he's not going to listen to you. Just, like, just call cut. It. Yeah. <laughs> it's good. Just take it. Yeah. But he laughs. Yeah. He laughs ridiculously in, at all the time. Oh. All in different, in different spots of the movie. He just like laughs. We're like, <laughs> can, can we talk about the scene where, where she brings out the drink and he goes, Lisa, you know, I don't drink. And she goes, hold on. Yeah. I've got that written down. He goes, hold on. She goes, no, you need a drink. And so she goes and she brings back what looks like it half looks, a glass yeah. of whiskey. Yes. And then pours vodka and into pours it. And pours vodka yeah. into it. What the I was like, was I think I'm was missing ginger something. Ginger ale, maybe? Apparently, maybe, maybe, maybe. I was trying to figure that I out. I was trying too. to figure it I out, too. I thought she already yeah. came in with the alcohol, right? I thought right? that was That's the drink. It. And then she pours a bottle of vodka in there. And I'm <laughs> yeah. like, I was That's like, going to be terrible. Maybe you guys don't know about the vodka whiskey. Apparently, we already didn't know about fucking belly buttons. So, duh. Holy shit. Drink whiskey and vodka and uh, yeah. fuck belly buttons. <laughs> but yeah, about that same scene, I, I wrote down, Johnny, you know I don't drink. And then he proceeds to drink no less than four other times throughout the rest of the movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He does, yeah. Right. I actually have written that down too. Every he five. Like, he had champagne at his birthday party. Yeah. Like, oh, I thought you didn't You know didn't I don't drink. drink. Why the fuck? He's got to drink every five minutes in this yeah. movie after that. Apparently, he was uh, he fell off the wagon at, at that scene. So, yeah. but then he's drinking like, and she's got the tie tied around his head, uh, around her head, um, and then he's drinking and like spilling it down himself. So that's like, what he I meant. So I great. don't drink well. Right. right. <laughs> <laughs> Not that I don't drink. I don't know how to drink. Yeah. <laughs> I love this fucking movie. Yeah. Oh my right, god! So um, next, I think we jumped into the oh oh oh. So uh, he confronts Lisa in the in the in the room, right? And they have that fight, and he, yeah. how dare you talk to me like that? And he pushes her to the couch. Yeah. First of all, his his acting is god awful, but his acting out angry is even worse than god awful. I, I don't even know what to say about it. It just it's not even half believable. Well, because no, he gently guides, acting, he gently yeah. sort of guides her well, back he, to the couch. And this, this, like, this is what I wrote. You're tearing on. me apart, Lisa. Oh yeah, that was right out of the um, uh, what do you call it? Which movie is that? Um, uh, it's James uh, Dean. James it was Dean. out of James Dean. Yeah. yeah. So he, I Rebel, wrote, I wrote Rebel that one a, down too. Yeah, Rebel Rebel a cause. I wrote that one down too. I said after Lisa, after Lisa falsely accuses him of hitting her, Johnny supports his claim of innocence by aggressively shoving her ass <laughs> to the couch right. twice. <laughs> so good. Yeah, and well, and then, and these then, are all the ones I wrote down. Then after great. his emotional outburst, right, and he's so upset, he ends it with, "Oh, don't worry about it. I still love you. Good night, Lisa." Yeah, <laughs> yeah, right. What? And she's like, she's telling him how much she can't stand him, this and that, whatever. <laughs> she goes, up, she was halfway up the stairs. She's like, "Don't worry about it." Yeah. <laughs> everybody, like you said, everybody's always, "Don't worry about it. It's okay. Don't don't yeah. be bothered with it. Don't worry about yeah. it." It's not, what are you, What are you not being bothered with, or what are you not worrying about? It's like the whole movie is like, it's constantly contradicting itself. Yeah. It's ridiculously. There's a. There's also a weird scene where the next weird scene, of all of all the weird scenes, she's, shocking. She Lisa and the girlfriend. Um, she's like mopping the floor or, or doing something, and she's taking stuff out of a bag, and they're talking about Johnny, and and she says, "I got to get ready for the party. People will be here any minute." Yep. And then that scene ends. There's a cut scene where Johnny pulls in to the driveway, and the sun is out. The cutscene goes to a, a night shot of San Francisco. It goes the next day, 
she's talking to Mark and she goes, we got to get ready because the party's tomorrow. <laughs> Within his final scenes of his uh, whatever, when he suddenly turned into Arnold Schwarzenegger and he was yeah. around the, the room there. Yeah. Or two rooms, whatever the hell he was doing. It goes from like it looks like it's lit, like it's night. To he throws the TV out of a perfectly lit window, <laughs> right? right, right. <laughs> so and he crashes it, on the ground yeah, in the daytime. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. It's like how the what time is it? So yeah, yeah this is like there's random. I think the whole thing is set in the time. Bermuda Triangle or some shit. Yeah, it's, yeah, which explains a lot. So uh, <laughs> after the after the scene with Lisa, um, it cuts back to is that guy's name Mike? That's not his name, is it? Mike, yeah, the, one the, of, the, the weird the friend O-face. with the chocolate, friend. the O face guy, right? Yeah, yeah. He was telling him a story about the underwear <laughs> we'll, we'll with, Willy Wonka. with Claudette, right. which we all saw, right? Right, but then he tells this whole story, and it has like no punchline. It has yeah. like no, it's like he just randomly tells the story. Why do we just waste two minutes on this? And he goes, and then and he goes, he, she, Mark shows up. She and showed everyone him. my undies, and he's like. There was one person in the room, like <laughs> yeah. maybe the mom. But then, after he tells uh, Tommy this whole freaking story, or Johnny this whole story, and I think uh, Denny was there too, right? Then Mark shows up, Mark shows and he up. says, "I don't want to say it." Oh hi, Mark. Yeah, oh hi, Mark, oh, hi, Mark again. It's one of the oh, hi, <laughs> There's a oh, hi, Mark. Oh hi, Mark shows up, and now Mike don't want to get into it. Right, right. I don't, I, it's too embarrassing. You just told <laughs> yeah. two fucking people about it. <laughs> One of the guys shows up, and then they start to throw the football around underhanded again. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, is this catch like a lethargic th- <laughs> three year old? Okay, and and then somehow Greg like slams the ball in his gut. Holy and he shit! Goes down. Yeah. yeah, that happens a couple times too. I think almost every football scene, somebody is going down somehow. Yeah, hard. And it may be yeah. from a hard throw or a tackle in the park. He was literally as close to. Mike as I am to you and yeah. like he slams him into a bunch of garbage cans and yeah. I was like what the hell but the mall hits him I in think, the gut yeah and and they're they're like trying to hold his head like he might have a concussion like are you okay <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah you hit him in the stomach well you know I mean that's also a way you get aroused yeah. so hey you never know right. might right. hold everything there. in the belly button where all your nerve endings are yeah <laughs> So then, so then it goes to the uh, the it's scene where where Johnny gets upset and he's going to record everything right now. Oh, I love we have to scene. stop yes. here because first of all, he has like it's two thousand three. Okay, it's not like right. it's nineteen eighty, <laughs> and he's going to tape record everything that's going on, and yep. he presses record as he on a regular way. It's, it's, it's a sixty minute part tape, of that, you right? asshole. Yeah, what yeah, are yeah. you doing? <laughs> My favorite part of that too is like he's. Pretty much eavesdropping, and he overhears supposedly like for the first time is like his first suspicions or whatever. Yeah. And then he says, "I'll get to the bottom of this." Yeah. And, and he's got the damn thing in his hand already, and he's walking down the stairs. He's yep. got a tape in his pocket, yeah. so he's very prepared for this thing that just happened to himself. Right? You know? <laughs> he like, just happened to have a cassette tape, a cassette and a, tape, and a yeah. recorder. But, and like you said, it's like a 1980s recording, not not even a radio, just like a, a recorder. That you put the cassette in, and like, yeah, that's the first thing I thought of too. Was like tops. The thing is maybe ninety minutes if you if you <laughs> yeah. do like the slow right. speed, you do the yeah. slow speed recording. Right, right, you know, right. I'm like, how the hell are you going to record every days? Actually, at this point, it would have been a month of shit that he was <laughs> recording because it was a month prior to their wedding yeah. in the tuck scene, which comes a little bit later. Yeah. Right, and then he's still recording on the closet scene at towards the end of the movie when when uh, duh, what's her name uh, oh, Jesus Christ Lisa uh, Lisa 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 and Mark are having a phone call and he plays it back yep. which is another thing we have to talk about yep, yep. That, okay okay good 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 because I got that we can now get too. there too uh, <laughs> yeah uh, so then you already mentioned the the Peter scene came next oh okay which that is, came next so, yeah so, that was... so the Peter scene so first of all they're hanging out together this is the one time where they're not drinking alcohol they're drinking water they're like yeah. hanging out in a little room drinking water together and just shooting the shit i would never do that with you guys i like you but <laughs> i'm not gonna sit around and drink water it's freaking weird and that's yeah. that's when they have the whole psychologist scene which is funny out. because there have been four times in here where i've been like can we just pause this so i can make a drink so <laughs> after this one i'm going to make a drink yeah so then they have that they have that whole thing there's a bit of a fight scene i think in that one with uh him and and mark he and mark a, so mark's on the mark's on the roof smoking a J. Oh yeah, and he gets, why are you smoking yeah. that stuff? Let's talk about that too. And he gets so, super violent as all people who smoke weed do. Yeah, um, and he, and he, <laughs> I think what happened was um, Peter had a Hershey's bar in his pocket. <laughs> Mark really wanted, and it. so he goes to like throw him off the roof. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> right, like all stoners do, like get super aggro yeah. and try to throw somebody yeah. off the roof. And then he's holding him by the thing, and he's got him over the green screen roof. 
And he's like, oh, I'll kill you. And then they all step back and, and he goes, oh, man, I'm sorry. And Peter's like, no, that's all right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's totally, <laughs> totally, yeah, totally fine. S- secondary thing about that scene, he, he is an adult living in an apartment on his own, presumably in this complex. Why the fuck does he hide his pot under a brick on the roof? That's a really why, right, the, right. why would you do that? Why does he? I mean, maybe he goes up, up there, there to smoke. Fine, but why does he put the stuff under a brick yeah. on the rooftop? I don't understand. When I was a teenager, I did that with a pack of cigarettes once. They got ruined. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> okay, so okay. then then it's the tuck scene. The tuck yeah. scene comes oh, up. I, next. Love I didn't. This. I didn't now, understand. I assumed it was the wedding. I did too. Up, right? That's yeah, got to so be what it is. I They're thought all that five was the, in the wedding day. No, it's just fun. We're just putting it on. Are they, are they taking pictures? Maybe I don't they even know say. what the fuck they're doing. Yeah, right. And then they go yeah. to Mark, the alleyway. Mark randomly shaves. He yeah. shows yeah. up. Oh shaved. yeah, 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 yeah. That was yeah. never explained. They don't explain why. Yeah, yeah. And they yes. just decide. What do you guys think? Oh wow. Well. And they so just decide they're going to go throw the ball around. That interview yeah. I listened to this morning, and they asked Greg about that. Cheep, 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 yeah, cheep, yeah, yeah. Sorry, guys. <laughs> they asked Greg about the beard shaving. I'm like, what is the point of that? And he's like, oh, actually, there's a whole backstory to that, but they just don't mention it on screen. And then he doesn't explain it. And I'm like, oh, fail. Interviewer, <laughs> what is wrong with you? What is the backstory? But anyway. They, um, they which is up- actually a perfect. Yeah, it, it just perfectly fits this whole scenario. They end up playing catch, and Peter falls down. Yeah, Peter falls down. Right now, now there's something foreboding in this little in this little scene. Denny I was thinking to myself, almost prison humped him, but go ahead. <laughs> I was thinking to myself, what is the point of this? How is this relevant? Peter falls though, and it's right up in his face, the camera, and he says, uh, "I'm done." As presumably, he means playing football, but you never see him again through the whole rest of the movie. Oh wow. He's not at the party? <laughs> he's nowhere else no, he's in the rest of the movie. Nope. And again, that was asked to Greg on, on this thing. And he said, oh, well, the, the guy was told it was going to take two weeks to film. And it went way longer than that. And he had other projects. So he just had to leave. <laughs> that was it. We just, we just had to so cut his character gone. out. Wow. That's not. <clears throat> oh, my God. Um, <clears throat> tuck scene. Why? Right at the party. Uh, another gratuitous sex scene, I think. Yeah. Yep. With uh, ridiculous breathing. I think it was between Mark and Lisa. I actually didn't write that down. Yeah, there's one. There's the first one with uh, Johnny and Lisa. Then there's the one with Mark and Lisa, and mm-hmm. then there's the one with Johnny and Lisa again. And I think Mark and Lisa kind of make out again. My, f- again, my favorite. One of my favorite parts of this whole scenario is this quote unquote affair with Mark and Lisa. Mark is the most clueless motherfucker involved in an affair I've ever seen in my life. Yeah, he's like this. Johnny's my best friend. Why are you doing this or whatever? <laughs> First of all, when you called her, she said, or when she called you before you even get introed into the damn thing, she calls you with the, hey, lover boy, yeah. or whatever, you know, and then uh, you show up surprised that she's trying to get in your pants. Like, it was set up in the phone call that this is an ongoing thing, and you're shocked, and Johnny's yeah. my best friend. And then, so I thought. At first, when I was rewatching it, I was—I forgot that part. I was like, "Oh yeah, that's right." He's like constantly talking about how Johnny's his best friend because he keeps doing it throughout the movie. Like, why are you doing this? Johnny's my best friend. I'm like, Is that how you're maintaining your innocence? Right, I don't know. Right. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you lying to yourself at night. Is that what it is? I skipped over it, but after the rooftop drug dealer scene, there is a scene where she calls Mark and she's like dirty talking to him. Yeah, and he's like, "Oh, why are you doing that?" Yeah, and then <laughs> but then he he's later, clueless. of course, gonna have sex with her like at least two yeah. more times. I think that yeah. we see. And the whole movie, he's acting clueless as to why she's betraying Johnny for him, and oh, he's my best friend. But again, it goes goes back to the same shitty writing of Lisa constantly going, I'm not in love with Johnny anymore. Right. I'll just take care of myself and I gotta look out for me and don't right. I deserve this and whatever. I'm gonna throw him a birthday but, party. Right, but I gotta get and ready I'm for gonna, the party. Yeah. Yeah, I'm throwing him a birthday party. I'm doing this for him. He loves me, blah blah blah. Johnny's a very good provider. So I had to uh go into my inner Claudette there for a minute. <laughs> yeah, the mom was all about like <laughs> yeah, yeah. keeping yeah, Johnny around. He's a good provider and he's yeah. good for you and you should stay and yeah. Well he looks like he's about your age. Why don't you sleep with him? Right. <laughs> I think again if you if you assume this is somewhat autobiographical, the mother is just playing the talking him up so he's not talking himself up. Yes. Yeah, yeah, know, yeah. That's yeah. the kind of like yeah. everything's perfect about this guy. Um yeah. Yeah they constantly I think like everything in this movie is played up to make 
Johnny seem out like this amazing person who always looks out for everybody. Yeah. And, and he he's always telling everybody, if you ever need anything, you want just talk, you know, come see yeah. me, come whatever. He's always doing that throughout the whole movie. But to like no effect whatsoever. <laughs> and Johnny's there's a couple scenes like Johnny is talking to Denny when when he's when Denny says, I think I'm in love with Lisa. And he's like, oh, yeah, I mean, she loves you like a buddy or something. Yeah, like your friend. But don't you love Elizabeth? And he goes, oh, yeah, I do. Who's Elizabeth? Yeah. He just, like, they just. Yeah, some random, random person. Girl. Was like... And and Denny's like, oh, yeah, no, I do love her. Like, okay. Yeah. Yep. Oh, my God. And then the weird scene in the coffee shop where Mark asks Johnny about, uh, like, Johnny starting a new business or something like that. And he's got these new clients. And he goes, well, what kind of clients? And he goes, oh, I can't really say. Oh, so hey, how's your sex life? <laughs> yeah, hey, how's your sex life? Yep, I wrote that here too. Yeah. <laughs> how's your business? Oh, I can't really say. Hey, so how's your sex life? Yeah. The um, the segues. Oh, sh- and then there was an oh shit, I got to run immediately after Yeah, that. right. <laughs> <laughs> Which was probably actually the best writing in the whole damn thing. <laughs> <laughs> no, I got to go. But the, um, the segues from one conversation to another in this movie are just ridiculous. It's like just... Whatever pops in his head, that's what he wrote down. I think so, yeah. I think there's a lot of that. So um, <laughs> the next was the completely superfluous, random catch in the park scene between just Johnny and, and Greg and uh, uh, Mark. Yeah, Mark, yeah, Mark yeah. 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 So I don't know what that was, and he tackles them, and they're all buddy-buddy, I guess. Are they establishing that these guys are good friends, and they're still good friends even after what's gone on? I don't, yeah, I don't know that, what the fuck they're thing, doing. The... Because the next thing that happens is, is that Mark shows up in the apartment to fuck his girlfriend again. Yep. Fiance, which yeah. they never call her fiance. Did you no. notice that? It's yeah, always it's future, future wife. My future wife. Future, you're <laughs> my did, future wife. He didn't know the word. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah. That's my, might be one he of couldn't pronounce things. fiance. Yeah. My, one of my takes on this was um, looking at like how the movie is structured, right? You know how like you always hear about when actors do interviews for movies, they're always saying like how when they shoot a movie, a lot of times it's all shot out of sequence and then they kind of figure out what's going on, whatever. Well, I think this was like shot the same way, and then it was just literally just put together that way. Yeah, like it was put together in the order it was shot, and oof, because like there was like the way people act to each other, and certain things that happen within this movie just seem to be like jumbled. Yeah, like yeah. this should have happened before this or whatever, and yeah. it constantly goes on throughout the movie where you're like, she was just pissed. Well, and yeah. now you know, or they were just fighting, and now yeah. they're friends, and they're- and if he has these tapes. He forgot to listen to a bunch of shit that happened or something. I, I, yeah. Like, you should know that this happened since you went on a run with Mark. You, you know? Yeah, like, at where, that where point, you, at? you should know. <laughs> what that are is tapes one doing? hell is of it, a it's tape. It's because they stop, they stop recording after 60 minutes. So he doesn't actually hear shit that happens. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. So yeah. um, uh, we talked about the friend showed up, though, and stopped that sex scene. So we didn't have to go through another one. Um and she's talking to Lisa. Uh, that whole thing plays out. There's some weird scene shuffling strangeness. And then it's the party, right? Yeah. yeah. And then it's the party. And, of course, right at the beginning of the party, he's drinking fucking champagne. Right. <laughs> even though he doesn't drink. I don't know what that Surprise! Well, okay, after a night of drinking champagne. whiskey mask, you know, yeah, mixed yeah. with vodka, how do you know? Yeah. Yeah, 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 I guess, yeah. It's just downhill drinking. from there. Yeah, you stop drinking. Um, and uh, there was a weird... I don't, I don't remember the chronology for this because I didn't write it down. But there was a weird line in the party where... He says to her, um, oh, you invited all of my friends. You think of everything. Like, who the fuck else would you invite to somebody's birthday party? <laughs> right. <laughs> you invited the governor. Yeah, right, right. You forgot to and invite the, the guy down the street that we don't know, the serial killer neighbor. I mean, yeah. like, who you the fuck else You invited the deli butcher. Thank you. You thought of everything. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, okay, so so then Lisa decides to coax everyone outside for fresh air, and then without locking the door, yep. starts to go at it with Mark. Right? They're just going to do it right there in the living room. Yeah. Hope everybody stays outside for right. the next. I yeah, don't know. especially since you're the one that just told them all to get out. Right. They're not going to come back looking for you. Yeah, and then <laughs> um, there was this other rando friend that pops up. Who I assume would have been Peter, maybe if he stayed through the movie. Yeah, or possibly. Something. Right. Yeah, that's a good point. But then he pops in there and he's like, "What's going on? He, what What the hell does he say?" He says to Mark, "Leave your stupid comments in your pocket." Yeah. Who the fuck <laughs> says that? What does that even What does that even mean? Well, in the Disaster Artist, he says Johnny or Tommy says it again to somebody else. Like there's in some, his, like the the James Franco as. Yeah. Tommy says it to somebody in the disaster. He, said, he speaks that way a couple different times. Like he says something 
one of the wardrobe people on the movie in that scene where he throws the bottle and he's like, I didn't do it. It's bullshit. Yeah. She goes, at least let me take a picture. She goes, he's like, where's my, where's my wardrobe? And he goes, forget it. I'll just wear the jacket. And she goes, at least let me take a picture of you for, for continuity. continuity. And he goes, keep that on your forehead or something. Like he just says one keep of those com- random. Com- yeah. Continuity in your forehead. Yeah. Or, it, it, those it, random your things. Mind, that, that, yeah. But yeah, they don't ever name that guy. Yeah. They don't ever say who that guy is. He's just some random guy who's like, well, I, you got to be honest with Johnny. It's clone Peter. We'll right. just call him clone I, I think, Peter. I think those yeah, would have been Peter's lines. Probably would have been think, Peter. Based on what I heard this morning, that probably makes the most sense. Yeah. Um, when she fakes the pregnancy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And you have to ask again why the friends are not saying anything to Johnny. I mean, right. at this point, they're clearly like, hey, Lisa, you're a piece of shit. I hope you die. Right. And, right. But they're still not telling Johnny anything about what's yeah. going on. And he doesn't have his tapes, I guess. So he doesn't know what's happening. I, I... And then the girlfriend goes literally back from oh how can you do this and oh my god i can't believe you whatever to literally yeah. giggling on a couch next to her like two little schoolgirls yeah. yeah like okay so then there's the announcement oh we're expecting that comes out of the fucking blue at the party <laughs> yeah. okay and i'm thinking to myself what 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 the fuck okay. never mentioned again now, Hello, everybody. she must be pregnant I have an i'm thinking to yeah. myself she must be pregnant with mark's kid or yeah, something that's right, 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 gonna, right. That's it's going to develop yeah. into some weirdness right and then immediately they reveal that she's lying about it because she's the worst person in the world. Like, oh yeah, yeah. I, why? <laughs> I, I don't know. And then, and then Mark thinks it's real. And yep. then, in the middle of the fucking party with everybody around them, right? He starts asking about the baby. Is it mine? And yeah. they're just talking like there's nobody yeah. there, and somehow nobody hears them. Yeah. Until there's a little scuffle, and then Johnny's like, hey. "Well, then Johnny's well, outside." Well, here's. And then they're like, she damn says, near making out with each other. Right. Well, she goes, hey, everybody, let's go outside and get some air. So there's this, now it's a bigger group of people on the roof where it looks really cool. And and then suddenly they shoot back to, everybody's back inside. Yep. And, and Mark and Lisa are dancing slash about yeah. to make yeah. out. And she says, let's go inside and get cake. What was that before that? I forget. Because they go up, they go out, they go in, they go out. <laughs> They're like Anne Hesh. They, yeah. <laughs> they, go, they go, they're back in. There's a 90s reference for you. There's, there you go. They're back in, and and then she and Johnny are, or she and Mark are like about to make out. Yeah, they're romantically yeah. dancing. Yeah. Also, yeah. right in the middle of everybody. In the right. middle of everybody. Right. Again, it, I mean, if the name of the movie, The Room, didn't clue you in at all, it's literally like a 10 by 15 fucking room. Yeah. It's like, it's like an apartment room, like a living room there. And they're all like huddled around each other dancing, and these two are like, She's stroking his hair and, and his neck and looking like she's about to suck his lips off his face and whatever. Yeah. And then Tommy comes walking back or Johnny comes walking back in the room. <laughs> in the room. What's going on? <laughs> oh, hi, Mark. What's going on? Yeah. And then, the, and then of course, you get the most epic fight scene of the movie there. Yeah. Oh, which, my God. Uh, that was which, which Greg said in the interview took about 10 days to film. That took 10 <laughs> days to film? I don't know if he was being serious or not, but... I mean, granted, it it does put like you know, uh, Rocky three to shame. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> so so Greg was actually he was not only uh, Mark, he was also the line producer. So it was his job to review the film footage after each scene and tell Wazo what needed to be redone or whatever. So it, he he makes a comment about this. He says, you know, Wazo would ask me how it went. I'd give him a thumbs up, and then he'd be like, "Uh, oh, you always say that, you know." Like he knew he was totally full of shit. So he already had in his head. Was O did what when something was wrong and they were going to redo it and there were just some things that had to be redone and redone and redone because they just weren't right right they didn't have the emotion that they needed or something yeah, the raw which, emotion of that fight which is the whole movie yeah. nothing has yeah. the emotion that it needs but I, I guess he found a point of satisfaction somewhere in that. that's amazing <clears throat> oh my god um, yeah so that fight scene is is stupid. Um, but now uh, going you guys have into anything the, to say about that fight scene? I mean, it's just no, it's so ridiculous. The recording itself, right? Or have you gone? So, up to so the what's recording what's, what's next there now? is yeah. What's next is um, he's up in the room hiding in his closet, and Lisa comes up and says, "Hey, you can come out. Everybody's gone." And he says to her, uh, "In a few minutes, bitch," which was a really weird. But anyway, and then she well, calls. You know, she, she was making out with his friend, and he finally figured yeah. it out. Yeah. So, so she I calls Mark. But first she goes, who you calling bitch? I'm like, yeah. well, well yeah. you know, yeah. you kind of, you earned that one. Right. <laughs> but then she has the call with Mark. She's and got a lot of a, audacity. You know. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's quite obvious what's going on. And then he's like, sure, baby, come on up. I want your body. Yeah. 
<laughs> so fucking ridiculous. It's horrible. Right? Okay, so then he gets out the tape. Right. He gets out the tape. He comes out of the closet. He plays it back. Like, oh, we're going to find out about this. Yeah, and he plays it back. And, and there are lines in there that are not even yeah, in the conversation. Yeah, it's not the same conversation <laughs> right. from the phone call. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> But it's, it's like, close, I guess. Yeah. No, it was close, but there's like right in the middle. There's like a couple of lines that were not in it's the phone conversation. It's close to the call that they just had. Yeah, yeah. So it looks like they went just off script on one of them, or like when they were recording it in the video, she forgot or they forgot right. that one set of lines, right? Which to me, again, now I'm going to answer my own question because it's just how Tommy Wiseau did everything, right? If you were going to do like the whole recording thing like that, why wouldn't you just be recording what they were doing in that take so, right then and right. there and then right. play it back? You, you guys should listen to this Greg interview because it's I worth to. getting gotta, some of this. Send it to us. Yeah, I'll have to get the link. Okay. I'll send it to you. But he talks about this. He says their sound engineer, he's pretty sure it was the first time the guy had ever done it in his whole <sighs> life. So there was a bunch of times where the sound was just like not good. And they would just re-record something to dub later. Which explains or, all the dubs yeah. Yeah. throughout the movie. And, and apparently that particular scene with the with the tape, like Wazell wasn't happy with the audio of the original. So they re-recorded the audio for the tape playback. <laughs> but it was different. Right. They didn't say quite right. the same things. And, well, but he was happy with it. So they just went on. Wow. Yeah, because that's, <laughs> that's exactly what this movie was. Like yeah. After a right. while, you just keep going. It's like because, whatever. Yeah, it's yeah. Like, like Seth good. Rogen, let's just go drink this day away. Right, you know? right. <laughs> That's what they were doing the whole time. By the way, Seth Rogen, he is the character in that Disaster Artist that oh, makes he, that whole movie. Yeah. I mean, oh, yeah. Franco he, did he a does. great job, but his little brother did good. But Yeah, the fact that it was the two Franco brothers, which I, yeah, I do, I like his brother um, out of my head now. James Franco Don, and... Donnie Dick. I think it's Donnie. Donnie. Donnie Franco? Shoot, I don't think it is. Um it's Jim Bob Franco, but anyway, <laughs> uh, yeah. The two things. The first thing I thought of was the um, the bathroom that he makes. <laughs> and Seth, and right? Like, yeah. There, there's a bathroom right there. Right. With, uh, it's got everything in it, and he's like, "That's for me." And then the the alleyway part when they talk about the alleyway. Yep. When Seth Rogen walks in, and he's like, "That that looks just like the alleyway outside." And they're like, and Tommy was always like, "Yeah, because you know, Hollywood, like Hollywood. Movie, it's, yeah. a, it's a good Hollywood movie." He's, why, why didn't you just film in the alleyway outside? No, because this is a real Hollywood movie. <laughs> oh, it's Dave. I, Dave, Dave, Dave Franco. 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 You were close. Okay. You were closer than Jim Bob. Sorry. <laughs> but, yeah, just like the little things in the, the disaster artist. Like you said, Seth Rogen, like every time he pops on screen, he's perfect. Yeah. Yeah. It, just the, is. like that. He's the comic relief, but. In the best way possible. Like, yeah, like he's that, not really making that jokes. Yeah. It's like that. Yeah, exactly. That exasperated. That frustrated sort it, of. He's doing what we're what we were <laughs> doing. Like, why would you do that? Like, <laughs> yeah. this is not right. Yeah, he's literally the voice of. He everybody. is the one yeah. voice of reason that won't yeah. be won't be listened to by anybody. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Um, uh, oh, oh so, and then the other line in there. Sorry. Oh yeah, go yeah. Go ahead. No, no. All right. The uh, in the disaster artist when he goes strolling in after like they're dying of heat exhaustion right. or whatever, right? And the producer goes, "We're already four hours behind." Tommy goes, "Whose fault is that?" And he goes, "Yours." <laughs> <laughs> I about died. It was like, that pretty much told like to me that was like that entire shoot, right? That's exactly yep. how that whole thing went every time with him. So uh, she finally, at that point, after the tape reveal scene, tells him finally that she's done with him and she's going to leave him or whatever. Like, I don't know why the fuck she waited this long after all the shit that happened. But anyway, that's that's the moment, right? And so it's, it's the get out, get out, get out of my life, whatever. And he goes on that rampage, right? Where he breaks everything. Does, before we get to that, yeah, yeah. does she ever announce to him that the pregnancy is fake? I don't think it's revealed. No. Okay. I don't think so. No. And it's not going to matter in the end anyway. But no, <laughs> no, but, well, but, yeah. but but Johnny goes on this rampage and then <laughs> thinking I've got a baby on the way. Like, yeah. none of that seems to matter. Yeah, no, but he goes on this whole world is crushed on the epic. Yeah. So he goes it's on amazing that destructive destroying rant. everything in that room breaks everything. Because if you notice, he threw the tape player before and it did not shatter. It was like a slow yeah. motion bounce off the wall. <laughs> right. Yeah. This time he's breaking it all. Yeah. Yeah. He's yeah. breaking everything. It's the oh, why? Why? Is this? Oh, yeah. God, he, he's just, over, and everything. he's just like throwing then, like throwing, one arm sweep. Like and then whoosh, if you goes. noticed in the this TV goes out the daylight window. Yeah. And he's. Huh? 
the daylight, oh, the daylight window yeah. at night. Yeah. yeah. So he's having this this emotional scene, and he starts having flashbacks. Right. Some of those flashbacks, he wasn't even present for that shit. <laughs> <laughs> How the fuck does he know about that? <laughs> I had no. <thought> <laughs> So his rage is building over some shit that he didn't tape and he wasn't present for. It's other people in I different. Thought of that. I, oh, that's brilliant! Oh, I that's like, what the fuck? That's great. That's right. Like I said, the whole time too, all I could think of was he's turning into Arnold Schwarzenegger because he was his scream. Yeah, this is just. Arr, arr, arr. I was like, what the fuck is he doing? And then he dry humps the, the red the dress. dress. The yes. dress, yes. yes, he's on the ground. Yeah, I mean, I think. Was he jerking off with it? I, that's kind of what it looked like for a minute there. He had the dress on his groin. Yeah, he's he like, oh, lean back. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. What... <laughs> that's after he throws the TV out the window in the daylight, yes. and he takes the couple drawers out and then knocks the dresser over. Conveniently, the the one, uh, whatever that box was, the, the, the keepsake box, lands nice and perfectly in front of him with the gun still in it. Right. <laughs> You destroyed this whole apartment, and that one thing landed right in front of you within arm's reach perfectly. And he pops that open, and he pulls out the gun. Yep, and he blows his brains out. It's the slow-mo. I I literally laughed out loud watching this because it was just so ridiculous. And then it's another 30 fucking minutes of Lisa and (laughs) and Mark and Wake up, Johnny. Come on. Is he dead? Oh, my God. Get out. Get away from me. Get away from me. Get away from me. And then they, they tie up the whole uh, Lisa and Mark thing nicely. <laughs> Where she's like, we can be together. He's like, you'll never have me. Yeah. And she, yeah, it, yeah. Dude, it, at one point, he pushes her and he says, get out of my life. I'm like, dude, you're in her fucking apartment. I know this guy is shot dead here yeah. or whatever, but. You're in her apartment. Right. Yeah. Where is she going to go? <laughs> to your apartment? <laughs> what the fuck? And then the that's neighbor brilliant. kid comes back. Go wait in the lobby until I get out of here. It's my last what the fuck is wrong with the neighbor kid because that's yeah. what I wrote every time he yeah. showed up in the movie. I yeah. just wrote what the fuck is wrong with the neighbor kid. And so he has a, a ridiculous scene too where he's dead and they're all blaming each other. for it. yeah. It's all everybody's fault, but ultimately it's it's Lisa's fault. She is the, she's is terrible. the yeah. precipice she, of all this. She she's the catalyst of Satan. all this rather. And the She's got a devil's death. tail coming out of her vagina. Yeah, <laughs> belly button. And then you and then you hear the sirens going. The cops. Yeah. Are, who the fuck called the cops? Was it the gunshot? Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, because everybody lives in the fucking apartment is there in that room, so I'm not sure who called them. But <laughs> so, well, you you hear voices too say, you know, what's going on? Is everybody okay? Whatever. So there's apparently other people, which would make sense. There are actually other people in the area. Did all the people leave the party? Because all of this would have happened while the yeah, party yeah. was going on. Yeah, no, they, they, they all left the they party right before. Yeah. So when he's in the closet, the closet scene, she tells him everybody left. Oh, everybody yes, left yeah, from yeah, the yeah, party. everybody was gone. But again, yeah, if you're in what looks like an apartment building, then there would be other people around. Because, yeah. well, they, they even allude to Denny lives in the building, Mark, Mark lives, lives in the room. building. So they're in a building of some sort with other people, so... I would assume there's another tenant somewhere that could have heard that gunshot. But you know what? There were multiple times throughout this movie that I yeah. had to just like just take my head and go, oh, I don't need this shit. Yeah. <laughs> so then, then the credits roll, that's the end. Yeah. And, and I wrote here, um, okay, because I think that's all you can say about yeah. this movie, really. Is, You're um, just like, okay. it finished, and I was like, wow, that's really, really <laughs> terrible. That's really, yeah. 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 And then, so for the room itself, again. Final thoughts on the room. I, it's a shit show of a yeah, movie. It's a, I don't, it's a terrible. I, movie. What I had texted you, I looked at it earlier, was this is a tr- absolute train wreck of a movie. Yeah, yeah. I will stand by that. Yeah, there yeah. is no worse movie than this one. But are you both glad you watched it? <laughs> I mean, in a sense. I mean, we it spent is, yeah, a, sort of. what, what, we spent an hour and a half talking about it. It's ridiculous. Almost, yeah, yeah, yeah. When you add the other ten minutes that I got to add on here, yeah, an yeah. hour and a half. It's that bad. Yeah. It's terrible. Now you jump to the There's, disaster artist. Every right. every everything in this movie is bad. The writing is really bad. The acting is really bad. The directing, the directing, is bad. the pacing, the everything. sound, the, everything. the cut <laughs> everything. scenes, the yeah. the all of it's bad. The wardrobe, right? Because sometimes yeah. he's like not wearing a jacket or randomly wearing a jacket or whatever. Yeah, um, it's, it's all bad. Everything, but and. Again, you get to those, some of the ones where you watch where you're like, okay, it's so bad, it's good. This never becomes that. Yeah, I'm not there. <laughs> Ever. However, to me, it is just 
to have because I'm a snarky asshole to have something to make this much fun of. I get so much joy out of it. <laughs> yeah. So here's what I'd, I'd, I'd equate it to. There are certain bars or there are certain places where you can you can take someone who's got a similar sort of sense of humor or personality to you and you're like, oh, I think they will like this place. Right. If you take the wrong person there, they're going to hate it. Right. right? They won't mm-hmm. enjoy yep. any part of it. There are people of a certain sense of humor and certain personality type. You could show them this movie – and then afterwards, you have a conversation like ours where the conversation talking about how bad it is is fun. Mm-hmm. And you can have a good time over that. Like, why is Denny so fucking creepy? And why is why is Lisa terrible? And why is he humping her belly button? And, and yeah. you can enjoy that stuff t- with the right kind of person. My wife wouldn't make it 10 minutes in this movie. She'd be like, this is dumb. <laughs> and no. I don't want to do this anymore. And it's not going to be fun to talk about. This is a waste of my time. The minute that first love scene started in that background, whatever, because it's the guy singing about how he'll do everything for you and this, and that, whatever. And it's supposed to be this sappy love song because each of the background music kind of goes with whatever that scene's supposed to be. But it's horrendous music. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It would have gotten that like a minute into that. And yeah. Heather would have been like, do you want another divorce? Or right. what, <laughs> yeah. what the hell is wrong with you? Yeah. You know? My wife would have just laughed like, yeah. I'm not wasting my time with this. I would this have looked over no and sense. she'd have been gone. Yeah. 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 Um, so it's talking about it like this with you guys was a lot of fun. Yeah. It's the best part of that movie. This yeah. is yeah. the best part yeah. of that movie. Really and, and the disaster. The disaster artist. artist. Now, because I wanted to go back to that one too. I want to wrap up. You have to see the disaster artist. It always helps to watch the room before. So you get all the jokes and you see how accurate this movie really is. But then when you watch The Disaster Artist, that very end scene where they show the movie in that one theater, right? Yeah. Um, I, I want to do some research because obviously that part was true where, where they showed it to one theater. But I wonder if the reaction was really like that instantaneous as far as like that, them laughing at it. Sure, I could see that. But was Wizzo's reaction to them laughing like – Turning it on his head and saying thanks for watching my comedic movie kind of thing was it that fast or was it I I, I imagine think that's it a would be like time years like, later right eventually yeah. it, and even then like, as it hit cult status he might have been oh right. okay that's a it's an accelerated time frame of people going from like this is really terrible to kind of laughing at it to him embracing okay people are going to think this is a joke so I may as well just say I made it as a joke yeah and I think that's what happened because it was kind of you know for okay you know like we've said before for um. The effect of the movie, they do it all right there in that one scene. Right. So, but yeah, I think it was like later on that he decided that, oh, okay, I'm just gonna have to embrace this to the point where we go to what I uh, I texted you guys earlier and I said you got to check out the Golden Globes. Oh right, from, yeah. And it turned out it was like last yeah. year, uh-huh. and it was for because it, it was for this movie, right? Yeah, it was for the Disaster Artist. Yeah, and he and uh, Franco brings him up on yeah. stage. My that was again because it was this entire scenario between the movie, the room, the Disaster Artist, and then like. Just him as a person, along with like all this shit that was – because I saw a couple of interviews too that I was just like, what in the hell is this guy doing? When he brings him up on stage to go, as to go and accept the award and <laughs> he goes to grab the mic and James Franco kind of like strong yeah. arms him off. Like mm-hmm. like even Franco knows like, nope, yeah, nah, yeah. Uh, yeah. you are not getting a hold of this mic. <laughs> I don't know what kind of crazy is going to come out of that fucking head of yours, yeah. but we ain't doing it. So yeah, so the whole thing is just – because Tommy Wiseau is friggin' literally out of this world. Yeah. He's like, don't know. Uh, I, I don't know. I don't know what to say about that guy. But it's amazing. Um, for future reference, apparently Wiseau and uh, Nicotera yeah. made at least one other movie, yeah. Best Fiends, or be- mm-hmm. that I, I'm going to have to go watch. They, they've got another one together. Oh, Lord. Yeah, it looks like it says Best Friends, but it's Best Fiends. The, way the they, R is in parentheses. The R is yeah. in parentheses, yeah. So I don't know what it's going to be, but I don't know. Because on one hand, it can, like, I haven't heard as much about it, so it can't be as cult classic as right. The Room, but who knows. I'm going to check it out just for 10 minutes. I'll check it out for 10 minutes just, just to see if I can find it like online somewhere. I'll check it out. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so that is that is uh, The Room and The Disaster Artist, I think. Do you guys have anything else on this outside of the fact that you probably don't want to talk to me for about a week? (laughs) (laughs) It's a good thing I only have you guys over once a week. Yeah. (laughs) I'm saying this conversation was the best part of watching that movie. Yeah, it really was. And and again, uh, I've said before where I wanted to try. uh, 
I wanted to really try to do like a mystery science theater esque thing with you guys. I think we'd really have a good time doing something like that with something like this. But just trying to get together where we're away from our kids because you couldn't watch this, or, you know, with the, a chance of a kid running running out of the room. Yeah. Uh, no pun intended. But. I would still like to eventually try to do something like that with some other movies, you know, and just like the three of us pick it apart because I think it would be a good time. In the interim, we'll just keep doing these where we just like watch some. Unfortunately, for, for your benefit there, dear listener, uh, we'll watch some horrible shit and just pick it apart and we'll see. Because <laughs> <laughs> this is a lot of fun. This is this went off exactly how I wanted it to. Yeah. So I very much appreciate you guys uh, taking on the assignment. <laughs> <laughs> with such uh, vigor. <laughs> Thank you very much. It was great. All right, so I think that's all we're going to say about this because I think we've beaten a dead horse, literally. Um, you guys, please, hopefully you've watched The Room and The Disaster Artist by this point, and uh, hit us up and let us know um, your thoughts, what you might have picked up on that we missed, and... Uh, what other movies are similar, like in a similar vein that we can kind of pick apart? And uh, check us out on Facebook and uh, contact us at whatifgeeks at gmail.com, on Twitter, and on uh, Instagram. And we will talk to you guys soon. Good night, Tony. Good night, Mom. Good night, guys. Good night, Tommy Wiseau. <laughs> <laughs> You're tearing me yep. apart. Oh, hi, Mark. <laughs> <laughs>